Do you guys remember that tumbling interloper from 2017 that came into our solar system? Oumuamua, the first known interstellar object to pass through our solar system. Well, researchers are still trying to give it an explanation for what exactly it is. Some researchers have tried to pin it as a nitrogen iceberg, but Harvard astrophysicists say that's impossible. And they wrote about it in a new paper published on November 5th in the journal New Astronomy. And here's why they think that's not a possibility. When Oumuamua first came through our solar system back in October of 2017, it made its exit traveling at 57,000 miles per hour, certainly not something that originated here in our solar system. That flat, weird shaped object passed the sun and it was tumbling end over end. It also accelerated at a pace that couldn't be explained by the gravitational pull of the sun. And astronomers couldn't find any visible evidence of a propellant like water vapors or gases escaping Oumuamua and thrusting it forward. So scientists are still unsure of how Oumuamua traveled and also what it's made of. In fact, when I went to Boston back in August, I spoke with Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb about Oumuamua and here's what he thinks. We should not make this mistake again. Right. We should not have a prejudice about whether we are alone, whether we are the smartest kid on the block. We should just check our sky and see if there is any technological equipment out there. What about, you know, what about Amuamua speaks to you that, you know, there is something here and this isn't a false positive? Right, so uh, in 2017, the first object from outside the solar system was spotted near Earth and it didn't look like the rocks we have seen before from within the solar system. It wasn't a comet because it, it didn't have gas or dust around it. Comets have cometary tail usually uh, and it didn't look like an asteroid, just a rock because uh, it had a very extreme shape. Uh, as it was tumbling, the amount of light that it reflected changed by a factor of 10 and its shape uh, was most likely flat based on the way that it reflected light and then it was pushed away from the sun by some excess force and uh, and my point is if we've never seen them then why not also contemplate the possibility of an artificial origin and in fact in September 2020 there was another object found it was given the name 2020 SO and it was also pushed away from the sun without a cometary tail. And uh, then it was realized that this is actually a rocket booster that was launched in 1966 from Earth. And it had very thin walls and that's why it had a lot of area for its mass so it could have been pushed by reflecting sunlight. So here you have it, an object behaving like Oumuamua, which we know is artificial because we produced it. But it was not a sail, it was just a thin object. And that led me to think that maybe Oumuamua was thin, not for the purpose of behaving like a light sail, but maybe for another purpose. For example, it could have been a receiver that is trying to collect signals from probes that are out there, like these UAP that uh, are being talked about. And uh, maybe that's, that was the purpose of this, but we don't know. And the best way to learn more about objects like Oumuamua is to look for more of the same, new objects that come along, and we will find more in the coming years. For example, with the Vera Rubin Observatory that will come online in two years, we, we could find one every month or so. And then if we find one that is approaching us, we can send a spacecraft equipped with a camera that will take a close-up photograph. Back in March, two Arizona State University astrophysicists say they had figured it out. And they published papers stating that Oumuamua, they think, was likely a chunk of nitrogen ice that popped off a Pluto-like planet outside of our solar system. This theory would work in a lot of ways. It would solve that mystery of the invisible propellant. The paper states, as Oumuamua approached the sun, evaporating nitrogen gas would have pushed the object and been invisible to telescopes. 
and astronomers know that nitrogen ice exists in our solar system because they found it on Pluto, so it's not unreasonable to suspect that chunks of nitrogen ice occasionally split away from exoplutos. It seems reasonable to conclude it is a piece of another planet and it's a planet like Pluto. That's exciting to have a, a piece like that in our, in our own backyard. And more than that, it tells us that the things that happened in our own solar system, uh, where you had Pluto's forming and, and banging into other icy objects and, and fragments flying off, all of these things, we learned that that probably did happen in our solar system as a result of this research. And it tells us this is probably a near universal process and that other solar systems are doing the same thing that our solar system did. But not everyone is saying that the case is closed. Not everyone is buying this conclusion. And here's why they think it probably wasn't nitrogen. Amir Siraj, an astrophysicist at Harvard University said, quote, the moment I saw those papers, I knew that there was no physical mechanism for it to work and not even the error budget for it to work. Now, Siraj and Avi Loeb, who you just heard from, argue that that conclusion that Oumuamua is a big chunk of nitrogen is flawed. They argue that there isn't enough nitrogen in the universe to make an object like Oumuamua, which measures between 1,300 and 2,600 feet long, and it's about 115 to 548 feet wide. They argue that pure nitrogen is rare. It's only been found on Pluto and it only makes up about 0.5% of the mass. They argue that even if you scraped off all of the nitrogen in the universe off every Pluto-like planet that's even predicted to exist, they say there still wouldn't be enough nitrogen to make a Muamua. They calculated that the mass of exoplutos needed to make a nitrogen iceberg the size of Oumuamua would exceed the mass of the stars, requiring at a minimum more than 60 times the mass per star needed to make all the planets in our solar system. But they say that's crazy and it's preposterous, and it does sound pretty crazy when you explain it like that. However, those two astrophysicists from Arizona State University argue that Loeb and Siraj are wrong and that they did not make mistakes, so it appears that there's a little bit of a disagreement here in who is right about this crazy mystery we know as Oumuamua. One of the writers of that paper from Arizona State University even writes, quote, they're attempting to manufacture controversy when it doesn't exist. But the Harvard astrophysicists say the mystery of Oumuamua is still not solved. And of course, they believe that there is the possibility of artificial origin that is still on the table. So I wanna hear from you guys. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen my interview with Avi Loeb, but this was just another interesting development of this back and forth of what is Oumuamua? How does it move? What's it made of? And clearly there is a lot of disagreement. So what are your thoughts? Write them down in the comments. Please be nice and civil down there. Sometimes it can get a little bit wild, but I do enjoy reading your comments. So thank you in advance for writing a comment. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to like and subscribe. And for all of you who have supported Ellie and Space along the way, I so appreciate it. So just wanted to give you a big thank you. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'll see you soon.